In this lecture, we're going to do some time series with Python. Here I have some libraries we'll be using. I'm going to read a CSV file. Here we have our passengers.csv and it has data from 1949 to 1960 of air passengers. So it's a very used uh, data set for time series. I think it's a great example. So we can get started with this problem. So the plan is to use um, a, a library that's called Nixtla, and it supports some of the statistical models we'll be using and some other models uh, I might might do some lectures later but in this one we'll be working with auto arima and ETS model. The first step before doing any modeling is to plot the data. So let's take a look at the D types of this data frame. So we have date that's option. First step would be to convert the D type so we can do PD to daytime and DF date. And now we have the data type in the right format. It's data. One thing that we can do in pandas that's really great, we can do df.plot, and we, we just pass in how we want the plot to look like. So we say, okay, date go in the x-axis and y in the y-axis. So and we get this time series. So um, yeah, I mean, this is how the data looks like. We can see that in the most recent years, the it, it looks like the the variance has grown. So in the in the end of the series, the different if we take the range of the series, like the minimum value and the high value, the, the maximum value, it's uh, it's larger than at the start of the series. So we can see that it has a certain structure. So one way to work around that is to, instead of predicting the raw data, you can do a log transformation and predict the log transform. So for example, um, we can do df y log np log df y. This will create a column that has the logarithm of the target. So, and now we can do df.plot and in the x-axis, we use the date, and the y-axis, we use y-log. And here we can see that the, the, the time series is a little bit more stable. So, I mean, this might be easier to predict, but still, I mean, it's something you need to try each time with the data you're working with. Um, in this example, I'm just going to work with the, with the raw data, with this one. The, what we have here. So the next step would be to fit a model and make predictions. So here we won't be doing any validation. It's just to understand how you can fit a model and predict future observations. I'll select first the date and the y variable. Just leave the log out. I'll add this column uh, unique ID. So just passing a, a constant value there. So the library we'll be using requires this. And one thing that I need to change is the name of this date column. I'll just call it, instead of date, I'll call it DS. That means date stamp. Similar to timestamp, but with dates. So, and after that I can print it and so we can see how the data looks. So, so this is the, the way we need to set up the data in order to use this library. Now I'm going to import the stats forecast libraries. So, so this is how we can get to the library uh, project. And so it's uh, the project is called Nixtla. And the library we'll be using now is called stats forecast. This, uh, I think it's a great project. And they have, uh, yeah, great results in comparison to other libraries. They were able to develop these methods to run very fast. And it seems that they are, they were able to make it faster than R. I think they have some benchmarks, um, somewhere in the, in the library. So I think this is a great library to work with. And this is mainly the first example we'll be working on. Getting back to our example, so here 
we import this library. So now I instantiate the stats forecast class. So I can pass in the models list. Uh, so basically this is auto arima, which I define with a CSON length of 12. That means that we're using monthly data, basically the, the seasonality is monthly. And here I pass in the frequency. So the frequency is monthly, of this time series. So we just instantiate that and then we just do sf.fit and pass in the data. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I think this is, this is like the simplest time series model I ever work with in any library. It's just really, really easy. So all you need to do is define the data in the proper way. And this is why I used uh, a little bit different example than what it's in the documentation. So it's going from something that you might have in a CSV file to what you need to, to set it up for this library. So now we have fitted the model. And if you do sf.predict, you can get the prediction. So here I define the horizon, that's 12 months, and the level that is the level of the, the confidence interval. So, um, and here we get some predictions. So we get this the date, date stamp column, the outer arima predictions, and this is the, the lower end of the confidence interval, the high end of the confidence interval. Generally, what you'll be carrying is the model prediction because we generally need a point estimate, but in some cases it's interesting to look at the confidence interval. Um, so what I, what I see in these predictions is that we get the last day of the month in the date column. And in our data, we're using the first day of the month. So we have, yeah, tail. We have so the last the last observation is December nineteen sixty, and here to me it would make more sense to see uh, January nineteen sixty because it's the continuation of this um, of this data. In order to make that uh, make that change, I will assign this to forecast. So and. Then I will add the, a day to that to that column, so I can call I can load time delta from the time. Here I can add a day. So I take this ds column and I add one day. So, and this is what I wanted. So so this is the last observation of the data, December, and the next the prediction is the on the first. Uh, day of the month of next year, so 01, 01, So, and this is a um, really simple example of how you can uh, fit a model with uh, some data and make predictions. So we still didn't validate anything. So I'll, I'll explain how to do that later.